Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to first address the idea of attention, something I've been thinking about a lot lately, writing about a lot lately. And um, it's, I think, really at the core of everything we're doing. One of the questions that came up in pregame chat here was that uh, what if I can't get to that gap between thoughts without like really getting into a Taiji form or something like that, or standing meditation or something like that. And uh, it kind of fits in with this idea. The, I believe that your attention, your ability to attend or direct your attention is your most valuable resource. It is, and that's true for all, all humans. I think our ability to, to attend, to direct our attention, it's the, the core of all experience is our attention. And your ability to control your attention is your most important superpower. And that is, if you can learn to direct your attention, then it opens up infinite possibilities. If you cannot control your attention, you're pretty much at the at the whim of whatever is happening, and including the part of your mind that is. Um, chaos. So your ability to, to when I talk about attention, there's two qualities of attention that I want to want to emphasize. One is the capacity to get the nervous system in a in, in a place where it is ready to receive information. So just being able to extend your awareness so that you're able to receive information coming, probably coming in whatever it may be. So that's like you know, kind of the yin side of attention. That is in a in a state of preparedness. The channels are open, ready to receive. Then the second part is where you are discriminating either consciously or unconsciously, consciously or pre-consciously, able to discriminate and say, this is important right now. And this is happening in your nervous system all the time. Things are, you know, your subconscious, pre-conscious body mind is constantly making choices. Each heartbeat, there's a, there is a choice in your autonomic nervous system whether to speed up or slow down. It's, uh, if it's speeding up, it's activating the sympathetic nervous system. It's slowing down then you are activating the, the uh, parasympathetic nervous system. So that decision is happening all the time. And with it, all kinds of other things are, are cued into that. When the sympathetic nervous system is, is, is cranking, then you're gonna get more of your fight, flight, freeze hormones and neurotransmitters happening. When the parasympathetic is happening, it's more into the rest and digest mode. So there's that, that constant conversation is happening at a pre-conscious level. But that also you have a voluntary attention. That is where you choose to think about this and not that. You choose to, to direct your attention at one thing and another. And this is the other really essential part of, of attention. That is your ability to filter out vast quantities of information to be able to deal with the very small amount that your conscious mind can process at any, at any given moment. So our ability to regulate our attention, our mind, is, uh, is our most important superpower. So with that, we're able to, to decide to be here doing this and not doing something else. 
stop watching reruns of Laverne and Shirley. The, there's a decision there to where to direct one's attention. The decision right now to listen to what I'm saying as opposed to checking your, your text messages. You are choosing where to put your attention. Now, if you don't direct your attention, you do not control your attention, somebody else will. We are bombarded with lots and lots of, of stimuli, which are cunningly des designed to grab as much of our attention as we can. And not only that get us into an emotional state where that is, we are becoming, we care about these, these things, be it who wins the football game or, you know, who is uh, the next American Idol or whatever it is that, that is put out there to grab your attention and to sell more deodorants and beer and things like that. So the capacity to control your attention means that you have to be able to occupy a position where you can step outside of your mind and be able to control your mind. This is something we talked about um, last week. We were talking about disappearing the chi, right? When I talked at the end of uh, Qigong exercise, I have you disappear the chi. And I, I said that in order to disappear the chi and with that dissolve everything, you have to assume a perspective that is even more insubstantial than the energy in order to be able to do that. In order to control the mind, you have to assume a perspective, a place from which to view that is more insubstantial than the mind. So in the classical Chinese model that you know you first control the mind, then you control the heart mind, which is the, the shin, uh, spelled X-I-N, opinion, H-S-I-N in, uh, in uh, the way Giles, but the, uh, so your heart, and that's, that's more your emotional mind. It's also kind of fits in with a lot of what I'm talking about, the pre-conscious. And it's a, it's, it's described, and we talked about this a couple of months ago, you know, they described it as the the shin monkey. So the and that's it's excitable, it's erratic, it's impetuous, impulsive, it's scrambling around. Learning to control that is the job of the E, which is the wisdom mind, and variously described as you know the logical rational mind or something beyond that. And I prefer to think of it as something beyond that, but you know, it, there's a, a variety of, of uh, explanations for that. But that's a yin horse. And the yin horse job is to control the, the shin monkey. So, but each of those, you know, you're occupying a position of greater insubstantiality in order to do that. In order to control the E, you have to move even, even more insubstantial into your shen, your spirit. Now we're going into, we're moving very far in the direction of nothing as opposed to something. It becomes more and more of a, you know, less and less substantial to like, you know, like it becomes more just an idea that a, than uh, something you can think of. But the um, um, learning to control your mind which each and every one of you is doing requires that you be able to get outside of your mind, be able to say this, to make a choice in what you choose to put your attention on. So the question about how do I get into that gap between thoughts is very much about where you choose to locate your awareness. How insubstantial are you willing to go in order to 
be able to occupy that position. So if you are in your mind and it's the that idea of the gap between thoughts or something is is you know something uh, that I do. It's a resource. It's a it's it's a, an object of thought. You, it's you're, you're just moving thoughts around. You're rearranging the furniture. In order to be able to to do that, you have to actually leave the building. You have to get out of the building of the mind and move into a that gap between thoughts. To be able to get there, you have to be able to move into a state where you are looking at your mind kind of like you'd look at your your laptop. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I can I'll boot it up and we'll do a few things here and okay, that's done, I'll close it and, and be able to sit here. How do we do that? It is the, it's a matter of familiarity, which is part of the Kung Fu, which is to get so familiar with going to that insubstantial place that you, you say, oh yeah, I got this. And you're able to comfortably go there and, and park there and just watch the, the, the shin monkey do its tricks and say, okay, all right, you settle down over there. You know, watch the, the logical E do its tricks and say, okay, you sit down over there and then you're boom. You're in that quiet place. How do we get there? We practice. We, every time we activate body, mind, spirit integration through the superconscious by actually feeling into your body, consciously feeling, consciously moving. Every time we do that, we open the door to that superconscious state. The more familiar we get with it, the easier it is to go there. Easier it is to, when you go there, you're able to direct attention from that, from that neutral spot. If you are banging around from one thought to another, there is, you got no place to stand. You have to actually step outside to be able to control these, these energies of thought that are banging around inside your inside your mind. So when, every time we go to that place where we actually are feeling, we get a, an opportunity to to move into that 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 state of spirit, Chen, and that's where the action happens. That's the word we're developing our, our our skills in accord with this. And the, the real interesting thing about this way of going about it as opposed to just observing your thoughts, is this is uh, this is a form of meditation. So what it does is by integrating the body mind into the process, you you don't let go of your physical abilities whenever you get, you move into that insubstantial state. You're able to include the substantial and the insubstantial at the same time. So, the, uh, so it becomes a transcend and include kind of a thing. Each, each, each level of, of expansion allows you to bring along with it the, and, and not just bring along with it, but enhance the more substantial aspects of your being. So what that means in terms of your, of your, you know, the payout for you is the cash value is where increased health and vitality comes with that things operate more smoothly, as well as your capacity to function in the direction of, of say, as a martial artist with less internal conflict, less 
internal resistance for, for, for what it is you're doing. So in the past, I always said, yeah, point your index finger, feel your finger, reach and, and, and feel that, and that will allow you to clear the mind. And it will, if you can do it again, as if you had never done it before. That means putting your full attention on feeling that finger. It's, the longer you do it, the harder it is to do because it's easier just to plug into the memory of having done that once and say, yeah, it didn't work. You know, well, you actually haven't done it. You're, you're doing the, you're replaying an old movie, but it's not just the fingers. You know, you can reach with your elbows and just do that right now. Just, just reach out with the elbows and feel that. And take a breath and notice that everything smooths out. And that's because we're able to direct attention. When we say, oh, reach with the elbows, we are controlling attention. Elbows are being emphasized. They get the solo. And the rest of the band just kind of vamps along and, and, and lets the elbows do its thing. But the whole band is better for the fact that the elbows are taking their solo now. And then they recede in the background, but they're they're established there. They're like they're, they're still doing their thing, and everybody else starts to play. So uh, I got lots more to say about attention, but let's uh, let's see if there's any questions or thoughts on this before we go further. Anybody? We're good. No, good. Cool. Okay, well, let's leave that for the uh, time being. That's uh, um, what, I to, what I want to say about that right now. The, um, let's go back to wood energy since we're still in springtime and we're in Chinese springtime and approaching the, the Gregorian calendars version of spring coming up very soon as well. So, uh, And we talked recently about wood being this expansive quality, moving from the yin of winter to the yang of summer. And there's this oh, thrusting unidirectionally, and generally it's, it's considered. There's a sense of oh, moving. In actuality, you can move in many directions. As you're, there's like a tree. All the branches of the tree will open up and extend out. And so learning to, to access that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a simple exercise to kind of get the wood going. And then we're going to um, bring wood chi into some simple Taiji pet booths so that you can feel what it feels like to actually bring the wood energy into that move. Because each of the elements, and basically anything else you want, any other kind of energy you want, but the Chinese like to think of it as the five elements. They take each of those elements and each of them has their own, you know, uh, pluses and minuses. And um, so you can, you can put any one of them into a particular move to give a different expression. So let's say if I'm, you know, if I'm just bringing my arm out like this, right? If, I, if I'm doing like this, it's a, a watery kind of energy. And that's a entirely appropriate, effective, and desirable under certain circumstances. Whereas if I want to do it with a metal energy, it's more of a, hmm, boom, there's a, there's a sense of, uh, it's short and abrupt and boom, it's very located. You know, whereas wood energy, the same thing, wood energy, there's a sense of expansion, like whoa, get bigger. So anyway, that's just, just a, 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 an example there. So we're going to do a meditation, get the wood energy going, and then we're going to fit it into some forms and just kind of see how we can build up that wood chi 
from from scratch in any moment. Cool. Is that something you want to say? No? Okay. Okay, good. All right, so once you stand up, please. Just feel on the wood. What's that? I'm just feeling the wood. You're just feeling the wood, okay. The dude is feeling the wood, okay. So, uh, let's uh, barrel down, step out, shoulder width. Okay, so we're gonna start as usual with our three pillars because we wanna really establish that, establish our central equilibrium by feeling the balls of the feet, feeling the toes. These are soft. Reach for the crown of the head. Okay, the chin, open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back. Allow your toxic drop. Feel the tensegrity, reaching up with the crown, taking down with the feet. Feel the poles in opposition there. Feel the crown, knee one. And feel the way loo at the, at the, at the coccyx. Feel those pulling in opposite directions. So that's lengthening your spine and creating tensegrity in your back. Creating energy between those two points. So just feeling into that central equilibrium. Weight centered over the balls of the feet, reaching with the crown. We're opening to the big chi, filling up. Your index fingers point, reach with those. Establish your energetic coherence. This organizes the whole body mind into a unified system, coherent, integrated. So we're combining the integration of your energy field and accessing your connective tissue system. We're combining that with the big chi. So more energy is moving through as we're doing this. Free through the elbows and open the shoulder joints. Feel the energy in your hands. Bow down to the left, release the qua, bow down to the right. Very soon, soon qua. Everything is uh, you're allowing it to settle, settling into the support of your connective tissue system. Allow the whole body mind to fill up. Now we're going to do a very simple beginning exercise. We've done it before, but I'm going to emphasize the wood chi as we do this. So take your right arm, you're going to reach with your right elbow right wrist, index finger, and reach, reaching with the wrist. Your arm is very heavy, very relaxed, very stony. And then reach the fingers and fill. Feel that expansion 
Feel the wood chi as you expand outward as we've gone from yin to yang. And elbow, reach down with your elbow, your wrist, bend at the wrist. And allowing that to go from yang to yin. Your index finger, right elbow, wrist, reach with the wrist. Very relaxed, very soon. Allow the wood and the expansion, that sense of expansion moving out, 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 reaching, opening, and exhale. Relax. Elbow, wrist, and yang to yin. Letting that go, emptying out. And crosses the body. With your elbow, your wrist. With your turn, you're reaching out and opening. Reaching, standing, feel that. Yang expansion and exhale, reach with the elbow, the wrist, rotate palm up, yang to yin. Elbow, wrist, reaching, open, expand. Feel that length, they feel all the way down your body. That yang expansion and then elbow, wrist, down to yin. Down. Body. Wrist. Up. Fingers. Expand. Open. Feel the pull down your torso, down your leg, through your feet, and into the earth. Reach with your elbow, rotate your, your palm out, both thumb down, and turn your body. Feeling with arm is relaxed but full. Feel that expansion. Feel the wood chi just filling up there and directing across. Side open, reach. Elbow, wrist. Wrist. Reach. Open. Elbow. Your attention goes to your elbow, your attention goes to your wrist, your fingers. And the opening. Feel that all the way down through your foot and then elbow down. Relax. Just notice that one arm may feel longer than the other at this point. Let's feel into that. Feel the difference between the two arms right now. So we go to the left hand. Bring your left elbow, your left wrist. Up. Bending, opening. 
Feel that yang expansion. Now back to yin, elbow, wrist. Letting that go. Elbow, wrist. And open. Down, elbow, wrist. Consciously putting your attention on whatever needs to be dealt with in that moment. Feel your elbow, feel your wrist. You're controlling your attention, feeling your fingers reach open. Feel that extension. Elbow, wrist, down, yang chi yin. Okay. Elbow, wrist, reach. And uh, elbow, wrist. Elbow, wrist, fingers. And open. Feel your elbow. Rotate your forearm. Feel that fullness there expanding. Reaching out. Reach. And open. Elbow, wrist. And to feel, feel that yong expansion and elbow, wrist. Yang to yin. Elbow, wrist. Feel your arms moving without moving. Feel that young expansion. Feel that wood chief filling up all the different positions existing as potentialities. To the ball, the right foot, set the right hand spiral down to the left, sinking into the right claw, step in. A deep breath, inhale. Disappear the chi. Remember to do this, you have to even more insubstantial than the energy. Empty out and feel into that emptiness, not clinging to anything. 
Not the energy, not to your thoughts, not to your body. Just the thing is just in a state of wholeness. Okay, let's play with that now. Take that wood energy. We're going to, in a similar way, go from yin to yang and yin. So let's um, step forward with your right foot. Go a bow stance. We're just going to relax into that. And I'm going to go through a very simple ward off posture. Just going, not, not doing much, we're not, we're not shifting weight, we're just keeping everything on the front leg. We're just going to spiral down to the left, reach with the elbow, feel that. So you're directing your awareness, your attention to the elbow. Now, be aware simultaneously of the effect that's having on your shoulder joint. Now, that's opening the shoulder joint. Now, add in the index finger. Feel the, feel the reaching, pointing, reaching with the index finger. The ball of the right foot at the right knee. Your spiral down to the left of the quad. Now, as you're turning, allowing that energy, the big chi to move through, reach with that right elbow. As you turn very slowly, reach with the right wrist. Turn so that. You're facing me, square on, and feel that expansion. You're opening so the energy is going like that, even though your body posture is static. The energy is not. Big and it's pulsing, vibrating. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down and release that. Hands come down. This is good from yang to yin. Feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the left, reach with the elbows. And the wrist, relax to the index finger, and turn. As you turn, reach with that elbow, reach with the wrist. Feel the connection through your body. Feel your feet with your fingers. Feel that expansion, filling up, loading up, opening. Down to yin. The ball set the knees, spiral down, reach with the elbows, wrist, turn, reach, open, expand, fill. Feel the connection between your shoulder blades. Both arms are part of one unit. Both elbows are reaching. Very relaxed, yet very full.
down. Get back. What foot are your left foot? Roll the left foot, set the left knee, barrel down to the left, releasing down through to the elbows, the wrists, arms are very relaxed. Very good. Now feel all set the knee. You're going to turn, reach with that left elbow, that wrist. And open, feel that young energy. Feel the continuity throughout your whole body. Feel the integrity. Reach with the elbows and feel that, that sense of fullness. That falls at the left knee, spiral down. Down. Now fall, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, elbows reach, opening the shoulder joints, reach with the wrists. Back. Turn with the elbows, the wrists, filling up, going from yin to yang. Balls of the left knee, spiral down, hands come down. Left ball, set the left knee, reach for the elbows, wrists. Energize, open, looking, filling, fill that wood cheese. Back. Now you're in a, a neutral posture. Uh, go for, allow it to get very yin, very soon. Release. There's a sense of fullness, though, with the energy. Now, without moving, by feeling your elbows, feeling your wrists, feeling your fingers, reaching without moving. So, the intention is to expand, to like I said before about reaching as being a extension with the intention to connect. So there's that sense that you're reaching for something, to something. Feel that, and feel the wood chi filling up. And let that go. Empty out. Fill it up again. Feel your elbows, your wrists, your fingers, around your head, fall to your feet, fill up. With chi. Let that go. Notice that by doing this, we're drawing a distinction that just between just being just full of energy, having a system very cranked up, and having a specific type.
type of energy, that wood chi, which is going from yin to yang. Well, that's a, lots of different flavors here, but this is one we're exploring right now. We're just getting it so that we're having a distinction be, to, between the, the neutral, but full, and the expanding field. The familiarity with this leads us in the direction of what we call understanding chi, understanding jin. Being able to get this is enables us to, to be able to step outside of the mind, outside of your body, and be able to occupy a position of insubstantiality while sub simultaneously feeling the substantial. And that, I, I think that this is um, an important tool in, in terms of Kung Fu, in terms of our being able to study this stuff. All right, so step in, take a deep breath. Yeah. This is here the chi, the mind, the body. Let it all go. See, please. How are we doing? I feel a bit impish. Impish. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I, I grew bark. <laughs> Great. Any questions, thoughts? Complaints? Scott? Um, that was really awesome. All of it was really good. It was just amazing to me that, you know, as we were reaching out, I mean, it, it just kept going. My physically, my arms kept getting longer and my, my shoulder kept releasing and longer. And longer. I was like, come on, it can't be any more. And no more. It was just, it's amazing how much the shoulders release. Right, right. <laughs> Lynn. Yeah, on the subject of longer arms, when we did the first one, and um, before you said one of your arms may feel longer, I looked at your arms and I thought, his arm's longer than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that too, Valerie? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it it gets it gets freaky sometimes. <laughs> Dan, you had something. Yes, uh, uh, I noticed that uh, as you're going out, actually moving, uh, uh, the energy feels like it's uh, flowing, and uh, as he pointed out, that it keeps on going. But when you uh, release it and just in the uh, just a resting position, you start doing it. It is again, very intense. The uh, energy movement, the chi movement, very intense, even though I'm not moving anything. Mm -hmm. well, I guess that's my comment. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So that's we're we're playing with here. This is you know that understanding Jin, understanding Chi part of the program where we're learning to make these subtle differentiations. And you got to be in a certain state of awareness in order to be able to even notice it. You know? mm. And also to, to have it not be threatening. Because if they, that level of insubstantiality is not for everyone. I know some days it's not for me. It's, <laughs> it's like, but yeah, okay, that's enough. You know, you, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's an adult dose, but by getting familiar with it and then with its counterpart, substantiality, you get that balance in your system and you're able to, to uh, contain it. You're able to get a structure which contains the, the energy and controls it. Cool. Um, anybody else? Valerie. My feet are so full. Your feet are so full? My feet are so full. <laughs> um, there was a point where there was so much energy. I had I went back to an old trick, which is shifting to one leg and lifting the other foot, not completely off the ground, but, you know, releasing yeah. that, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't too much. It was just so much. It, it was a lot, <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> let, me, let me just uh, demonstrate what Valerie said, just for, maybe for people who might be watching this on YouTube also, just that uh, if, you do have a, if you do have a situation you got too much going on, like say your feet are on fire and you're like, ah, I can't, I, it's too much. Uh, one way of doing what Valerie's talking about there is just, just feel, load up one leg and pick up the heel and and do the other one. And just just doing that will break the uh, break the energetic connection and allow some of that to disperse. And, mm. and so that might need that. Another thing you could do if you want to just empty out real quick, something we talked about a little earlier uh, before the class, and, and that is to to just go up on your toes and then just drop down. Just allow that to reverberate. Just, <clears throat> just let that let that settle in. And that, that'll have the, the effect of, of grounding your energy. And also give you effect of ah uh, getting um, establishing sort of a whole body energetic connection as well. But my thousand pounds would have Crack the floorboards. <laughs> <laughs> there are insurance issues uh, that we have to deal with there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Nick, I just want to put in a word for anybody because um, I love that exercise, the the heat, the heel drop thing, yeah. and I have a, a messed up lower back from a compression injury, and I just want to say for other people who might be out there if you do it it's really important that you are soft when you do it as if mm -hmm. you are hard it will the impact will end up landing right in your lower back where you don't want it to <laughs> but you point, need to soften when you when you drop nice. yeah. thank you nick that, that that's important yeah so be uh be mindful whenever you you do that and just find the right amount of impact for you because it's uh, it's not a one size fits all. Rick, did you have some? Oh no. Okay. Cool. Um, good. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Thank you all so much. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.